as a Christian, I've had the honor, the privilege, and the blessing of getting to read more scripture ever. I I think I don't think I've ever read more scripture, or at least in such a short amount of time, than in my entire life. I've been, with God's help and mercy, trying to immerse myself in the Word, and. That is how you get closer to God, or at least one way of getting closer to Him, which is read the best love story that has ever been produced in the history of all earth, which is the Bible. And there will be certain passages, certain doctrines, certain passages from the gospel that will jump out at you, whether to a greater level of joy, to... Let me dive deeper into this because I am of little knowledge about this specific topic. Or in my case, repentance. I've realized, and praise be to God for this, but I've realized so many things, realized so many of my shortcomings, realized so many of my sins against my brothers against my sisters against non-believers and it's interesting because i've only felt a fraction of the weight of the sins that my soul has felt but it already feels so heavy it, it, it's so shameful to even think about One of those things that I want to focus on in this video is the, the, the whole idea that for the longest time, my conversations rarely consisted of scripture, of Bible stories, of books from the Bible I've read, from the Gospels. It rarely consisted of Christian values. It would always be about what were the movies I've been watching? What TV shows are you currently listening to? What new album are you listening to? Oh, I've watched this movie. Oh, I've, I've seen this TV show. Oh, I love this actor. Oh, I love this actress. Rarely has it ever been about anything revolving religion or revolving God or revolving Christianity. St. Paul said, I believe this was in Philippians, he said, whatever is good, whatever is holy, whatever is peace, whatever is love, think these things. And what is good? What is love? What, what, what are these things if not derived from Scripture? Why can't that be the purpose or the 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 way in which we we speak to one another saint paul also said to timothy he said that the brethren in the church of ephesus because that's where paul left, left timothy in the church of ephesus he said have the brethren read scripture or whatever it is that is, because the, what, what they can only de kind of derive from is the Old Testament. We have now the privilege and the, the blessing of God to read the both New and the Old Testament. But back then, they can only read the scripture from the Old Testament. But for us as Christians, how much more relatable is that to read scripture and to prophesy within each other. And what does prophecy mean if not to st the strengthening of faith of one another through conduct, through, through the, the way we speak to each other? Oh, brother, I, I am 
feeling a certain way and it is impeding my servitude to God. What does the Bible say about that? Oh man, I, yo, I felt the exact same. Yo, I felt, yo, I felt the exact same thing, and I've been feeling that same way. But you know, I've read this chapter in Jude or this chapter in this chapter in James. I'll give you a perfect example. I was reading James before, and I was just asking without any prompt. I was asking one of my brothers in faith, have you ever read any scripture? And he said, Santiago, in Tagalog, it's Santiago, which translates to the word James. And I thought, wow, James is a beautiful book. And two things were the thoughts that came into my head. Number one is, had I not asked my brother about scripture. I would have never known that my brother and I have read James and also we can we can prophesy unto one another about and we can dwell on the epistle of James. And number two, I wouldn't have even asked my brother about James or any epistle or any of the gospels or any book he's written from the Bible had I not read any book from the Bible because how can I ask that of which I don't have and haven't even conceived of? In a sense, hopefully I'm, I'm fluidly articulating my verbiage here, but the whole idea is my realization for myself is why for the longest time have my conversations not been Christ-centered, have not been biblically centered. Yesterday, the youth of our church, the youth of the church, <laughs> if I may say so myself, the youth of the church were gathering and the local chapter of the youth of the church, this, this local chapter is, they gathered, we all gathered in fun activities and games revolving Christ and doctrines from the Bible, but as well as the doctrine about prophesying unto one another, strengthening the faith of each other. And then after the formal gathering, I took some pictures, and the conversation trickled down between myself and two of my brothers in faith. And we were just throwing ideas from the Bible, Bible stories that we've read unto one another. Oh, my favorite character is, is, is David. Oh, my favorite book from the Bible is Christ because he's the book of the Lord. He's the book of the Father, uh, the Father God. And, you know, did you know this about Paul and Peter, how Paul reprimanded Peter in his face, which proves that Paul's apostleship is not from any man, but of Christ himself. And this was written because the people of Galatians were doubting Paul's apostleship of God. So all of these ideas, it was, we were, we were so passionate in our conversations. We were so passionate in the way we speak about God, about his love for his children, about all of these things that one of our brothers was just in the background, just listening. And he said, amen to one of those things or like tamayan or I feel that he was just listening and already all of our spirits were lifted up. And then I'm smiling in, in silence because I'm just remember remembering all of the conversations that I've had just within that day, able to prophesy and to speak the gospels and the words of God to my fellow brothers, to my fellow sisters, able to answer questions about faith within myself and with God's help and mercy, if others have questions, God is able to use me as a vessel into answering those questions. But for me, it's, it's, it's like, I haven't done that in the longest time. And 
Praise be to God for that. Part of me thinks of shame and part of me thinks of regret in a sense of why wasn't I doing this for the longest time? Why wasn't I feeling the joy and the the love, the great love that God has given upon us as, as, as Christians to share that with others for the longest time. But I believe God has let me in that period of, in a sense, darkness, a period wherein I wasn't realizing God's love in the, to the extent that I am feeling right now so that I feel the weight of it now because I wouldn't have felt the weight of my sins or even like the fraction of the weight of my sins and the immense love and gratitude that God has for us if not for the period that I had. So it's, I believe God's blessing to have kind of like that paradigm shift So in summation, I believe that us as Christians, we should not be ashamed of talking about Christ or, or even being Christian. Have our, let our conversations be about God, about Christ, about what we've read in the Bible. If you want to ask, my favorite Bible story as of this moment is the story of David. Which one? All of it. His life as a servant of God is so beautiful. From the day he was introduced in the Bible, which is uh, in 1 Samuel 8, I believe. It's either in 8 or 16. I'm not quite sure. But basically his whole entire being, you know, he was a youthful pastor of, uh, not a pastor, but a, a shepherd rather, pastor kasi sa in, in Tagalog, a youthful shepherd. Right now, I'm in Second Kings chapter 4 in the death of Ishbosheth, which is one of Saul's sons. Anyways, his whole life surrounding his faith in God. Yesterday, I was having a conversation, like I said, with w two of my brothers, and I was sharing the joy I found in reading David's story. We remember Goliath or Goliath, however you want to pronounce it. I like pronouncing it as Goliath because it's like a new pronunciation for me. But anyways, his name, Goliath, the 10-foot Philistine soldier who was in for 40 days calling out to Israel, who is your champion? Let us duel it out. For 40 days, none of the Israelite soldiers stepped forward and the moment David heard his cries he was in a sense he was he was livid because he's like who is this uncircumcised Philistine mocking the living God that's how much faith he had because how dare you mock the God of Israel the God of the Hebrews the one God And so Saul heard of this and David went to Saul. And Saul said, look, son, you're way too young to be a soldier. And David said, no, I believe that God has kept me safe for all of these years. As I am a shepherd, whenever lions or bears would take one of my sheep, the way he described it, he said, I, I opened the lion's mouth so that the sheep would escape and wrestled with his or, or tangled his, uh, the lion's throat. And God kept me safe from all of that. And so Saul said, okay, but here's armor for you as a soldier, right? Because soldiers need to wear armor or so, you know, so did, so King Saul thought. David said, 
this thing too heavy. I'm not going to be able to walk around in this. I'm not even used to this. So he took it off. He took five smooth stones, a stick, and a slingshot against Goliath, who was wearing, what, 30 pounds of armor just in his armor alone and like 15 pounds of just the spear and three foot of just like the very spear alone. It's just like three feet. That's the level of armory that Goliath was carrying. And David was just wearing shepherd's clothing and a slingshot, five stones, and a stick, which angered Goliath even more. He said, who is this that you, Israel, have sent? Are you mocking me? How dare you send such a lowly peasant to fight me? But very well, we'll brawl it out. That's his battle cry, a level of pride. You know what David said? David said, the God of Israel has put you on a platter and I'm about, to I'm about to kill you now. The God of Israel has put you on a platter for me. How dare you mock the God of Israel? That's the level of, that's his battle cry. David's battle cry is my faith in God. That's how much I have faith in God. That he has put you on a platter for me. And what did he do? We all know the story of David took one stone and said, boom, right here in the cranium. You feel what I'm saying? And then Goliath fell down, cut off his head. And that was the story. That's the prize or the, the proof that the God of Israel is with me. That God delivers the enemies of Israel to you. And so one of my realizations from that is, is that how I am as a Christian? Is my battle cry in the battle that we have against evil and principalities? Is my battle cry God? Do I pray every time I feel tempted? Do I pray every time I feel lust? Do I feel anger or any of the seven deadly sins or any of the passions? Do I pray every time I am having troubles when i it, when it's me versus a problem when it's me versus my emotions the 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 passions of the soul when it's me against all of these principalities do i pray is my battle cry god what do i wear do i wear what goliath is 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 wearing which is is physical armor do I have faith in my own self or am I like David or rather why not be like David? His entire armor is that of his faith in God. And I wouldn't even be able to share this with my brothers and sisters or even you, my watcher, if I hadn't even read that in the first place. It's, it's perfectly fine as an introductory to look at the story of David or look at the or watch the story of, of Jonah, or Job, or Abraham, Isaac, the 12 tribes of Israel. It's, it's perfectly fine to watch digestible stories of those biblical characters, but it's a different experience when you actually dive deep into it. The next story I do want to read is Job, but I do have to finish the entirety of King Saul uh, of King David's reign. Um, I finished First Samuel. Now I'm in Second Samuel with God's help and mercy. Anyways, go ahead and comment down below. I wish to read which Bible story is your genuine favorite. And my prayer for all of us as Christians is to let our conversations be that of Christ. Be Christ centered. Be Scripture centered. Be God centered. Am I saying that we can't talk about things that we experience in the world? No, we're humans. Who who doesn't talk about movies or pop culture? Why 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 not? But at the same time, it shouldn't be majority. Or rather, that shouldn't be the majority of our conversations.